Hello, you're on Pablo Spot. I'm George. This is the start of a series of videos where I show you how I convert a linear, tightly coupled backend service into an event driven architecture. And on this particular episode, I will explore a Python module called Fast API to build a simple backend service. So, let's start coding. So what I will be building today is an API endpoint or a backend service that will create a thumbnail from a URL of an image. So I'll get straight into it. So before I start, let me quickly show you what version of Python I have installed on my machine. So the first thing that I need to do is to create a virtual environment so I can isolate the space that I'll work in. And then I'll activate this virtual environment. Then on my Visual Studio code, an indication that the virtual environment is active is this bit in here. So what I need to do next is to create my requirements file. I'll define the base Python modules that I need to install these Python modules on my virtual environment. So the warning message that we see here is just an indication that my pip module is not up to date. And then what I need to do next is to create a directory on my workspace and call it app. I'll create an empty init file in here. I am an advocate of TDD or test driven development. So I'm going to write my code using the TDD approach. So on my workspace, I'll create a directory in here called tests. And then I also need to create an empty init file and start creating my first test case. I'll start writing the implementation for my test endpoints. So what I've set up here is a test for an endpoint called thumbnail that allows for a post method. Now I can start running my TDD iterations whereby I run my test for all expected failing test scenarios and then refactor or fix whatever tests failures occur along the way. So on my terminal, I start running PyTest. And then as expected, it failed. Let's just have a look at what the failure is. Module not found error, no module named app.main. So let's go ahead and fix this error. And inside my app directory, I'll start creating a module called main.py. And then in my main.py, I'll start the implementation of my API endpoint. Let's go back to my terminal and run my PyTest. Now I need to go back to my test case and update it with the functionality that I want to achieve. In my test endpoints.py, I will add a new assertion in here on what I expect to be passed as input and what is expected as output. I've updated the call to the post method to add an input or a payload and then I added an assertion such that I expect the response JSON to be not empty and that the output contains a URL field and a file name field. So on, our term, on my terminal, I'm going to go ahead and run my PyTest. So the test actually failed straight away on the evaluation of the JSON output. So I'll go ahead and update my main implementation. Firstly, I need to create a class object that would hold the input as well as output parameters for, for this call. So what I've done here is I created a base model and called, called it thumbnail, which has URL and file name property. So now let me save my changes to the main.py and then go back to my terminal and then run my PyTest again. So let's open our test endpoints and it's actually failing on line 14. Let me go back to my main.py and update the implementation. So what I wanted to achieve in my main.py is when the creation of the thumbnail is performed, a file name will be randomly generated. I will use a module called Wonder Words. I need to go to my requirements.txt and because I'm using a new module, I add that module in my requirements file. 
So with WonderWord successfully installed, I can now start using it inside my implementation. So in my main.py, my new implementation will look like this. So firstly, I imported the class random word inside the wonder words and then I'm using that to generate a random set of string and then concatenate all those strings to build my file name and then assign that file name into the thumbnail object. Let's go back to my terminal and run pytest again. Uh, what I need to do next is to update my test case and add a new set of assertions to verify a successful creation of a, a thumbnail file. But before I do that, I need to first update my original test case to use a valid URL that results to an actual image. So let's open browser and let's load that page, copy that link. Now let's go back to my code and then update my test case to use that as a source URL. And then let's run PyTest again. Now, at the end of my test file, I'll create a new assertion in here to verify the creation of a file. So what I have added at the end of this test case is a requirement for a file to be created and made available in another endpoint called static such that if I run a get method on that endpoint passing the output file name I'll get a response code of 200. So let's go to our terminal and then run pytest again. So with this failure I'll start writing code that creates the actual thumbnail. I need to go back to my main implementation and make the necessary changes to my code to satisfy this new requirement. I actually need a new module to be able to implement the requirement and this module is called AIO files. Now I go back to my main.py and then start writing the implementation. I've imported the static files class from fast API static files module and then I also imported OS module and then in here I set up a new variable called static deer which will pull the information from an environment variable called static deer and then on line 15 I mounted a new endpoint for all the static files and now I'll start building the code that will do the actual job of creating the thumbnail so let's open my explorer and then inside the app directory I'll create a python module here I need to update my requirements file and add a module called pillow. So now I can start using that module. So back to my thumbnail maker. So we've imported all the necessary modules that we need. We defined a static deer in here which will have a value temp static if it's not set and then the main implementation for the create method accepts input values for URL and file name and what we're doing here is we're using the request module to fetch the content of that URL and then using the content of that URL we create an image resize that image and save that to a file so what's missing here is the size property so we probably need to set that up as a global variable as well what I need to do is update my main.py to use the thumbnail maker module. So I go back to my main.py. So what I've done in my main.py is firstly, I imported reference to the create method inside my thumbnail maker module. And then inside the create thumbnail implementation, I call that module to start creating my file. So now let's go back to my terminal and run my pytest again. So my test failed and it was actually complaining for a missing directory. So let's go ahead and create that temporary directory and then run my pytest again. So all my tests have been satisfied. I also need to create new test cases to handle exceptions. So I need to go back to my test endpoints. 
So what I've done in here is a new test case called test create thumbnail exception. So the test failed. Let's have a look at what the error is. It says the race missing exception is not actually handled properly. So what I need to do is go back to my thumbnail maker and do the proper handling of exception. So in my thumbnail maker implementation, I added a try except block and it's handling an exception for missing schema. And then if that happens, I raise an HTTP exception, passing a status code of 400. So now if I go back to my test endpoints, the other test case that I want handled is if we pass a valid URL, but it's not an image file. Save my changes and run PyTest again. And there's an exception, unidentified image error, which is not handled. So I go back to my thumbnail maker implementation and add a handler for that. Run my test again. So now that all my test requirements are satisfied and all my required implementations are in place, I can go ahead and do a container setup for my application. So firstly, let's open my explorer and then let's collapse all of this. Let's close all our code. I'll create a Docker config file in the root of my workspace. So in here, and then in here, I'll start writing up the configuration. I also need to add a file in here. So now that the Docker config file is done, let me go ahead and create my Docker compose file. Now it's time to try starting the application. So our Docker compose failed because of some missing directory. So let's cancel this. I'll add a new property for volumes. Save that and then run my Docker Compose again. So let's go ahead and give this a test. Let's open browser. And that's the endpoint that we've created. Let's expand this, try it out. And then let me copy this URL, plug it in here, and then execute. So let's have a look at the responses. So we got a response code of 200, we get that URL, and we have a file. If I open a new tab, and then we copy this file, this should load the thumbnail file. API backend service is working properly. That's it for now. Stay tuned for the next episode where I show you how I break down my backend service to achieve an event-driven architecture. For now, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you on the next video.